Chair recognizes the gentleman from Spencer for an explanation of the bill and a motion thereon. Mr. Speaker, would you ask the clerk to report House Committee Substitute 2? Mr. Clerk, please report. House Committee Substitute 2 to House Bill 319. The gentleman from Spencer. Mr. Speaker, I move for adoption of House Committee Substitute 2. Question for the body is on adoption of House Committee Substitute 2. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Motion carries. House Committee Substitute 2 is adopted. Gentleman from Spencer. Mr. Speaker, members of the body, uh, this is an issue that has garnered a lot of discussion over the last few months. It's actually an issue that's been building up for many years. Uh, and that is the number of teachers who are available, certified teachers, to instruct our students in our classrooms across the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Uh, as we look at this situation, we have to first off recognize that we have many issues with our workforce participation, with the number of available people to fill the jobs that are coming to Kentucky. I think it's important to understand that if we're going to fill the workforce needs of our state with quality employees, it is inherent that we have quality teachers in the classroom of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. As I said in committee, House Bill 319 is not going to solve this problem. However, I do believe it is a good step in the right direction to take some positive steps as we find us here in the non-budget session year in 2023 that we can build on for the future. And let me share a little bit about what is in House Bill 319 as amended by the committee sub. The Department of Defense, along with the Council for State Government over the last two years has developed model language for an interstate compact for teacher licensure. Uh, uh, this model language has been developed. Uh, I believe there have been 10 or 11 states who have, uh, who have introduced legislation to enact this, this portion of legislation. Uh, I'll give you an example, why is the Department of Defense interested? Uh, why is Kentucky interested? We have Fort Campbell. We have Fort Knox here in Kentucky. Uh, imagine, if you would, if a, military, a member of our military is transferred to one of our bases here in Kentucky. They have a spouse who is a licensed teacher in another state. Uh, under this compact, if approved, if, as it goes forward, and it does take 10 states to adopt this language to start the process, that teacher would be able to get an equivalent license here in Kentucky, subject to the, when it came time to recertify, to the recertification requirements of Kentucky. So that's just another tool to try and help us speed up the process. Oh, sir, I've got a long way to go. <laughs> there's, so, there, there's so much good information here, gentlemen. Okay. Uh, it would require uh, the Kentucky Department of Education to update our online statewide job posting system, known as KEPS, Kentucky Educator Placement Service uh, System, rather. And uh, I know there's been a lot of discussion about how many teacher vacancies there actually are in Kentucky. Uh, there was a, a number going around of around 11,000. That is actually the number of job postings on that system in the last year, approximately 11,000. Uh, we, we're, when I talk to the Department of Education about the actual number of teaching vacancies, certified vacancies, that number is around 16 to 1,700 at our current time, but that's still way too many. This would require KDE to update this system and require electronic submission of job postings to the system and, and people to apply on this electronically so we can speed up the process. Uh, we have a lot of questions about why do we have a teacher shortage? This would uh, require KDE to develop a policy to get data from local school districts, would require local school districts when an individual voluntarily leaves their position to do an exit survey and to get that data. So we, we actually have data and information and require them to report that information back to us in the General Assembly. Currently, I don't know how many of you know, we have a uh, teacher scholarship program in Kentucky. It's funded for lottery scholarship dollars. Uh, in the last budget session, $1 million in each year was appropriated in each year of the budget. Uh, currently, there are limits on how much that a, uh, a candidate uh, 
for this scholarship can receive in this legislation. We change that language. We remove that limit. It would be up to KIA, the Kentucky Higher Education uh, uh, group that uh, uh, oversees their scholarship dollars for administrative regulation to determine that amount based on funds available and also require KIA uh, to submit a report to the Interim Joint Committee on Education by December 1st about the number of teacher scholarships provided. Uh, we have many uh, alternative teacher certification routes. Uh, there is language in there that would update those regulations that would allow an individual to pursue an alternative certification uh, with, with what's referred to as an eligible for hire letter instead of an offer for employment. Uh, it would require KDE's Office of Educator Licensure and Effectiveness to review the alternative pathway programs. There are nine different options. We passed option nine last year and come back to us or report on each of those options, their effectiveness, see if there's duplication and make recommendations on how we can improve that process. Uh, there is a, another portion uh, of the legislation that would start on July 1 of this year. It would only last for three years. It would provide for us to offer a one year interim teaching certificate that's renewable for a maximum of up to two additional years. In order to qualify for this, an individual would have to have a bachelor's degree or higher. They would have to have at least four years of work experience in the area of certification. Uh, they would be required to have a mentor teacher assigned to them in the district that hires them. And they have to undergo criminal background checks and complete other required trainings that are, that are necessary and it would also not allow this individual to provide instruction in special education. And that would limit a district to no more than 10% of the teachers in that district. Mr. Speaker, I'd be uh, happy to answer any questions, but this time I move for passage of House Bill 319 as amended by House Committee Substitute 2.